an unprecedented phenomenon is occurring more now than ever. Plastic products are rapidly being produced and discarded on a massive scale. Plastic film makes up 17.5% of plastic waste streams in Toronto, often in the form of low-density polyethylene plastic films. These films end up flying away from landfills and garbage transport facilities, where they end up in moist environments of local ecosystems. They then break down into smaller particulates referred to as microplastics, entering the food chain and water systems, later to be ingested by a wide variety of organisms including humans. The long-term effects of these plastics in the human body are still unknown. The question now is, how do we limit the amount of microplastics in the environment? Current solutions to these problems include taxes and limitations on plastic usage in many industries, as well as recycling plastic in circulation. However, the amount of plastic being circulated requires a more immediate solution. Consumers, suppliers, and vendors will not suddenly halt the use and production of these commodities. In addition, these limitations are not at a large enough scale to have a meaningful impact on the problem. Our solution was to create a fully automated appliance, much like the appliances found in homes today, but ours would be for compacting plastic. Design will allow the user to freely input the desired amount of plastic into the appliance. After the user selects a run cycle, the user can start the automated process. The process will begin with the pre-compaction phase, compacting the plastic. The appliance then begins to heat the plastic till it reaches the set temperature. The plastic is then compacted and finally pushed out of the appliance into a singular piece. The device must have all the features that make other appliances popular, such as ease of use, safety, portability, and functionality. With these design goals in mind, Densify was created. Physically, the appliance is comprised of seven subassemblies. The base frame subassembly is responsible for containing and securing all the system components, making sure that everything interfaces correctly. This includes rigid frame members, custom 3D printed brackets, in addition to standard metal corner brackets, and lockable wheels for easy transportation. The compaction subassembly is responsible for containing the densification processes in a controlled apparatus. This includes a stainless steel tube called the compaction chamber that's heated by three heating bands, monitored and controlled by three temperature sensors in conjunction with a solid state relay and microcontroller. This allows us to set a desired temperature at which to heat the plastic. The heating bands and sensors are wrapped in polyamide foam insulation to contain heat and are secured with hose clamps. Two steel plates are included in the compaction subassembly. A smaller one is welded to the top of the chamber to act as a mounting point and a larger plate was used to vertically align the end of the chamber as well as maintain a low center of gravity for the entire appliance, preventing it from easily tipping over. The loading subassembly is responsible for securing the force related hardware, that being the linear actuator and load cell sensors. The sensors were implemented using custom 3D printed mounts placed symmetrically on a plate. This is designed to evenly distribute the force exerted by the linear actuator during compaction. Using modified wood screws, the plate is able to freely slide up and down, allowing the load sensors to monitor varying forces in real time, kind of like an upside down scale. Mounted to the same plate, the linear actuator is the source of the compaction aspect of the appliance. Its end features a modified bracket to mount the piston head that makes direct, direct contact with the heated plastic. The alignment subassembly is a small but important feature in our design. It keeps the linear actuator and compaction chamber aligned using adjustable leveling mounts in case the linear actuator is removed and reinstalled. The rail subassembly is responsible for additional heating to the plastic and automated extraction of the densified product. It features an aluminum end plate that's controlled by a timing belt system driven by a high torque DC motor we call the rail motor. The appliance's software automatically moves the end plate after densification so the end product can be removed by the piston and safely collected by the user. Because the top surface of the end plate is in contact with the plastic, two resistive heaters are clamped on the surface to maintain melting temperatures, resulting in an even end product. Similar to the heating bands, a temperature sensor is mounted to, the mo to monitor and control the resistive heaters. The control subassembly contains and secures the microcontroller and all peripherals, including the screen and buttons of the user interface. It consists of a control box and custom 3D printed mounting brackets for all major control boards and a housing at the top of the appliance for easy user operation. 
A DC fan is mounted to the back of the control box to keep the electronics, especially the DC transformer, from overheating during operation. The exterior subassembly includes casing panels that give the appliance a completed look in addition to a protective screen door made of acrylic. A DC fan is mounted at the back of the appliance to cool down the compaction chamber once the user is done densifying their plastic. Next, we will go over the various aspects of the system hardware configuration. The various hardware components of the system are all connected through either DC or AC wiring. The electric circuit diagram shown here displays all the connections between various system devices and components. However, these components and connections are split between power and logistic-based electrical distributions. Logic is transferred to and from the Arduino in various forms of 5 volt DC signals, while power distribution is 12 volt DC or 120 volt AC power. All components are powered via an outlet using standard home 120 volt AC. A 12 volt DC transformer is used to power higher voltage DC devices. Lower voltage DC devices, such as sensors and amplifiers, are powered using the Arduino. The heating band alone are powered directly from the outlet power. The Arduino sends logic to activate DC devices using a shift register. Motor drivers control the fans and PTC heaters, while motor controller controls the linear actuator and the rail motor. A solid state relay is used to control AC devices. In this case, we only have a single set, which is used to control the heating band. Finally, buttons and sensors output data to the Arduino, and all this data is amalgamated to display text on the LCD screen. Of course, hardware itself is useless without some sort of software to control it. The software elements of the appliance are controlled by an Arduino Uno. The microcontroller uses Arduino IDE software to create INO files read and ran by the Arduino. The appliance software is separated into four distinct but intertwined packages, main, button, functions, and screen. Each package controller contains logic relating to its name. The program itself is designed to run a main loop. A given iteration starts by detecting user input or sensory input, and then senses data into the main loop. The first iteration will run the setup, initializing the LCD and various variables and sensors and starting any peripherals that need to be started. Next, a button check is done to determine if and how many buttons are being pressed or held. If a submenu is detected to be going, going into or currently in one, a button update is ran, updating the submenu allowing the user to cycle through the menu or calling a sub function. If a sub function is called or the sub menus exit, that function is then ran. This is determined by the sub menu function ran or the mode that the, the system is currently in. Afterwards, screen is ran to amalgamate all this data into a text form to also dependent on the current mode of the LCD. This is data is then sent to the LCD while logic output is sent to other devices. To use Densify, the user will open the protective door and input their plastic films in the compaction chamber. The door is a key safety feature in our design, as the appliance is programmed to pause all processes if opened and only resume once it is closed. To start the machine, the user will navigate the on-screen menu using the UI at the top of the appliance. The UI features three components. The LCD screen, where the user can see information relating to the design operation, the navigation buttons, and the contrast knob. The user simply presses the navigation buttons and clicks start on the main menu to begin the densification process. At this point, all that's left for the user is to wait and collect the finished product when the screen displays the quote unquote done message. While the user waits, the application operates through a total of six stages. Before stage one begins, the linear actuator is fully retracted in case the appliance lost power mid process due to accidental unplugging of the machine or a power outage in the home. In stage one, the linear actuator extends, pre-compacting the bags to remove air pockets and ensure optimal contact of the bags with the heated inner surfaces. In the event the entrance of the chamber is blocked or the piston is not aligned, the appliance's built-in safety feature will recognize the obstacle and immediately retract the linear actuator. In the second stage, the piston plugs the hole of the chamber as the heating bends and resistive heaters begin to heat the chamber containing the plastic to the set temperature. When the set temperature is reached, stage 3 begins. During this stage, the system will idle to ensure heat travels throughout the entirety of the plastic and is melted to a significant degree. In stage 4, 
The system performs high force compactions in time intervals, uniformly densifying the plastic. All compactions are programmed to retract by a set force condition using the readings from the load sensors in conjunction with the motor controller and custom code. Stage 5 starts with a timed cooling period to ensure the densified product has thermally contracted to allow for easy extraction. After the cooling period, the rail motor moves the end plate out from under the compaction chamber so the linear actuator fully extends to push the plastic out of the machine. In stage 6, the end plate is driven back under the chamber while forcing the end product to the base of the appliance for safe user collection. All fans will then run until the compaction chamber and end plate have cooled to a programmed temperature. Densify was designed based on an unbiased evaluation model, such that the appliance's effectiveness could be appraised with respect to the resources available and necessary precision. As Densify is intended to be a household appliance, the following factors assist in summing up the design's effectiveness and performance. Weight has always been seen as an important parameter in defining design, and is even more relevant for a medium-sized appliance such as Densify. Size is crucial in evaluating the footprint of appliances, where the volume taken can be a deal-breaker for a user. Noise is essential in assessing how smooth the integration of an appliance is on a daily basis. Lastly, power consumption is vital in the home appliances industry, as energy ratings are a large part of what users identify when choosing between options. Evaluating these four parameters, it is seen that the weight of the device was manufactured at 50 pounds. For size, the footprint was seen to be roughly 400 inches squared and the height to be approximately 4 feet. For this device, the loudest noise level seen was when the linear actuator was on and produced about 50 decibels. For power consumption, the device was seen to use 0.052 kilowatt hours to complete a full cycle using four bags. Next, a comparison of appliances was done to develop a better understanding of Densify's use case scenario in a household relative to machines already accepted across the country. Looking at this comparison, it is seen that the cost to run Densify once per day for an entire year is $2.26. Similarly, the user can run the cost of just $0.32 cents if used weekly for an entire year. As can be seen, Densify is able to perform a cycle with a very small power consumption. Although it is a medium-sized appliance, the electrical draw depicts it to that of a light bulb. Densify does not produce a very large noise level, nor does it weigh as much as similarly sized appliances such as washers, dryers, or microwaves. In addition, the annual cost, assuming daily use, is dramatically lower than the, all the other options. Once the device has gone through the melting and compacting systems, the inputted plastic must be evaluated with the following quality. Overall, the team desired a quality finish with no air bubbles, threads of film, or loose film. Now looking at the results. For surface finish, the product had a very smooth surface and was hardened. Looking at air bubbles, the product had no air bubbles within its wall which can lead to loose threads. The product also had no visible threading protruding from the body. Looking at loose film, the product was seen to be one solid piece with no loose film around the body and considered a pad. The system specifications can be split into three categories, general top level characteristics, operating specs, and performance specs. Looking at the general category, the device's height is about 4 feet or 46 to 47 inches. The device's footprint is a little less than 5 cubic feet or 400 inches squared which is equivalent to that of a washer. The max actuating force of the device is 1000 newtons, where the max pressure is about 760 kilopascals with a maximum operating temperature of 480 degrees celsius. The operating specs consist of the max actuating force which is limited to 556 newtons, the operating pressure which is limited to 421 kilopascals and the maximum operating temperature, which is limited to 200 degrees Celsius. Looking at the performance category, the expected density is seen to be 0.56 grams per centimeter cubed. The expected cycle time is 15 minutes. The expected number of bags this machine can hold is four, while the expected power consumption is 0.05 kilowatt hours. Looking at successes and failures, originally the extrusion was not occurring effectively because of a lack of uni uniformly distributed heat transfer, inability to reduce the viscosity of the LDPE because of a lack of shear force, Thus, we made this change. Additionally, high temperature requirements during the extrusion phase resulted in heavy burning and odor from the prototype. Adapting to the extrusion to a compaction, Densify was able to achieve an output without burning any plastic or releasing odors. Looking at future considerations, we can design an accessory for the user to input bags into and place directly into Densify. This can be used in conjunction with a piston pre-push feature for user ergonomics. Next, we can also design for a small form factor such that Densify can be an over-the-counter top appliance. A touchscreen module can also replace the LCD UI and there can also be hot surface labels on the device itself. Lastly, we can increase the number of plastic bags if the chamber is increased in size.